All right, we ch I just got done watching a scary story thing, but you know, I fuck with scary shit in general because it make my, my feet kind of feel a little iffy and my toes start moving because I'm like, ooh, that's creepy, you know? So we're going to watch three unsettling true prom night horror stories. I didn't go to prom. Uh, this is exactly why I didn't go to prom. They got terrible shit happening. I'm joking. I just wasn't. I, uh, yeah, I was a lame nigga, so uh, I didn't go. You know, that's kind of how that go. But anyway, we're going to see who got fucked up on prom night because it wasn't me. It wasn't me. But we're going to see about them. Story one, anonymous. It was senior year. I had just recently started dating my fiance, Mark. We were approaching the end of the school year, and so prom was coming up. Mm -hmm. I didn't really know if I wanted to go because I had just finally changed all of my contact info and my family moved to a new house because of my old stalker ex, Daryl, who's four years older than me. I was 18 and he was 22. We met when I was going through a rough time in my life. Long story, but he turned out to be a psychotic asshole. Okay. He got kicked out of the army and started doing hard drugs like heroin. I did- Jesus Christ. He got kicked out of the army and started doing hard drugs like heroin. I distanced myself from him as much as I could, but he was relentless. He attempted to break into my family's home at least three times, and I had to get a restraining order against him. But my family was worried for me, and for all of us, so we had to move to another house. You fucking right. The reason I was hesitant about going to prom was because I knew my ex Daryl knew about it. We used to talk about going to my prom together. Huh? It's the thing, man. Females in high school, they be talking to 20-year-old niggas and shit like that. Like, it's nothing. Like, what? Oh, shit. females, man. Y'all be toe up. Ever since our move, my friends would drive me home and make sure we weren't followed. I really lived in fear. I was scared Daryl would show up to the prom venue and try to find me. Mark has always been very understanding and supportive, and he assured me he wouldn't tell me to go to prom if he didn't think it would be safe. He made me feel comfortable with it. We and our friends went in a limousine together to the venue, which was a fancy catering hall about 30 minutes away. Uh -huh. We all sat at our table and had food and just hung out for a while. Some people went to dance, Mark and I included, for a while. I couldn't help but be paranoid for a while that Daryl was in the building somehow. One of Mark's friends handed me a little shot bottle of vodka and told me it would calm my nerves. First of all, nigga, is your prom just open to anybody? Don't you have to have like tickets and shit for prom? Nigga, how, I would, I feel like I should be safe inside prom. I feel like they should have security not letting nobody in that's not a student, basically. If you're not a student, not even a student, but I'm just saying, you could, I mean, if they not, don't have a ticket or they don't have nobody that's with them that confirms that they supposed to be here for a dance, you shouldn't come in, what? I drank it in the bathroom and almost threw up. But within half an hour, it really did take the edge off. Okay. A few hours later, our group hold wanted up, to hold leave up, hold up. calm my nerves. One of Mark's friends handed me a little shot bottle of vodka and told me it would calm my nerves. Okay, it was a little shot bottle. I said, did she down a fucking big ass bottle? I drank it in the bathroom and almost threw up. But within half an hour, it really did take the edge off. A few hours later, our group wanted to leave for what's called the after prom where you basically start drinking and continuing the party elsewhere with your friends. Oh yeah, y'all fucked up. As we walked outside of the venue to our respective rides, I saw one car parked in front of the venue that didn't have its lights on. I didn't know what Daryl drove at that point, oh, or shit. if he drove, but I saw someone sitting in it. They had a baseball hat on and were looking down, so I couldn't see their face. I pointed it out to Mark. Sketchy already. He told me to relax, there's no way it's him. We got in our friend's car who was picking us up, and we drove to our friend Melissa's house who was having a little after party. Don't ever say there's no way to zoom. There's always a possibility. The whole ride, I kept looking behind us, seeing if we were being followed, but I couldn't tell because there were so many cars on the road. Okay. That's I a good I remember sign, Mark whispering to me, relax, everything's fine, and he held my hand, and it helped calm me down so much. Get your Prince Charming ass. We arrived to Melissa's house, and there were already people at her house. At the peak of the night, I'd say there were 20 people there, and everyone was drinking. Okay, oh Eventually, shit. Mark and I wanted to go home. So Mark called his sister to come pick us up. And when she got there, we went straight out to her car. I looked around the street for any sketchy-looking cars, but didn't see anything. Okay. And at this point, I officially convinced myself I was just being paranoid. Mark's sister drove us back to their house, where I would be sleeping over. Okay. It was just his mom and his sister home. That's a good thing. We got people here. We're not totally alone. His dad is a retired cop, 
but he was still working at the time. Okay. And he was working a late shift that night. His mom was already asleep. It was very late. Uh Uh-oh. Mark and I just went downstairs to his room to crawl into bed. The whole den floor of the house was his floor. It had a mini kitchen, bedroom, and living room. Fuck that. His floor was level with the backyard, and so it had a back door. It was a a warm night, so some of the windows were cracked open. We were watching a funny movie. That was when we heard a bang on the glass door that led to the backyard. The sliding curtain was covering the door, so we couldn't see who or what did it. I shrieked, and Mark jumped up to open the curtain. No one was on the other side, but there was a post-it note slapped on the door with the word bitch on it. Oh, hell no. What a gun at. I'm about to I'm about to pull that bitch out. I'm about to light that backyard up with bullets. I'm letting you know right He now. found me. He followed me from the prom to Melissa's house to here, and he probably heard me laughing and knew I was down here. Mm-hmm. My paranoia was right all along. We went upstairs to Mark's mom's room and woke her up, then called Mark's dad and the police. Waiting for Mark's dad and the rest of the police to arrive felt like an actual eternity. When the doorbell finally rang, followed by loud knocks, Mark and his mom went to go answer the door. It was the police. Okay. I had to explain the whole story with my ex and the restraining order and now being followed by him here. They asked if there were any cameras on the property, to which Mark's mom said no. Then they asked me if I had any texts from him or if perhaps I knew where he lived. I told them I didn't have his number anymore and I had no idea where he lived anymore either. Man, if I know somebody is out to get me and they stalking me, even if I don't want nothing to do with them, I'm keeping information on where they live in now. What, like, where I, because if something weird happened, I'm gonna know it's from them most likely. If something was like this to happen, boy, boy, let me tell you, if you still stalking me, you better be ready to catch some bullets from me, man. That's all I'm saying. Man, she living, man, I'll be way too, I, I gotta get this paranoid attitude out the way i'm not gonna live paranoid for the rest of my life i gotta solve this shit either he going to jail or i'm shooting this nigga i'm letting you know right now i ain't dealing mark's with that. dad finally arrived on the scene i'm shooting this nigga if i was a girl i'm, I'm just saying if i was a girl i i don't i'm not going with niggas i'm just saying i took the posted note from the door home with me to try and compare it to other handwriting from daryl and it definitely matched mark's dad gave me a ride to my house in his police car so that we could be sure i wouldn't be followed During the ride home, I called our home phone and my dad picked up. I cried to him into the phone hysterically. After arriving home, my parents were waiting in the front for me. Mark's dad assured my parents we weren't followed. During this period, Mark and I couldn't go to each other's houses. Mark's parents had security cameras installed the same week. That's what I'm talking about. This next part is truly unbelievable. One of the side cameras on their property picked up motion, which alerted Mark's dad's phone. He grabbed his gun and ran outside to the smell of gasoline. He followed the smell until he heard the sound of liquid being poured out of a can. And there he saw Daryl pouring out gasoline on the sides of their house. I'm letting him have a whole clip on me. I'm not asking no questions. I'm not saying who is this. I am shooting him completely dead. I am sorry. I hear, I, I smell gas. I see somebody pouring something that I think is gas. And most likely, they not supposed to be on my property anyway. I am letting them have the whole clip. I might even fuck around and go get another one just to make sure they completely gone. With his gun drawn, Mark's dad yelled at him to drop the can and put his hands up. And that was the moment Daryl was no longer going to be a threat to my or my loved one's lives. I call it the sweetest justice that my future fiancé's cop dad was the one to arrest my psychotic ex-boyfriend who ruined so many years of my life and had me living in worry. He was sentenced to over 30 years for his crimes, the worst of which of course was attempted arson on a police officer's house. You know how good I'll sleep after finding out that they got his ass? Oh my God. Oh my, 30 years? That's not it. Man, that's, well, that's perfect. Cause that nigga's basically gonna die in that bitch. Not really, but man. I might have even paid somebody to get his ass done in prison. It was 2017. I was 17 getting ready for prom. Right. And of course, girls have it harder because instead of the guys who just rent the same tuxedos, yeah, y'all gotta do girls have to find and a nice and dress shit. that they're going to keep. And of course, prom dresses aren't cheap, nope. if you want a nice one at least. My parents didn't want to spend over $200 for a prom dress, so my mom suggested I look online for a used one. <clears throat> She'd even help me. <clears throat> we scrolled on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, Uh-oh. which had just become a thing back then. It Sketchy wasn't as popular as, as it is today. 
there wasn't really any luck on Facebook Marketplace, so we mainly searched Craigslist. We no. found a listing for a dress that we both liked. Nope. It was a navy blue evening gown, $50. It said it was worn once for prom. The seller lived pretty close, too. So I contacted the number listed on the listing, and in under 10 minutes, I got a text back. After expressing my interest and asking a couple sizing questions, the person offered to come to our house to drop it off to us. Bro, Craigslist, I don't think I'd ever shop on Craigslist. That is the sketchiest shit I've ever seen in my life. I don't think I'd ever do that. But my mom said no to having someone from Craigslist come to our house. Yeah, hell no. So I said we'd come to them that day. No, fuck that. I'll meet you halfway. I ain't even going to your shit. I'll meet you at a fucking Walmart or some shit. I asked for their name and they said Alex. And mind you, I would tell them to go into the Walmart. I'm going to straight up tell them, not come inside right at the entrance just so I know I'm safe. I'm being around people. Honestly, I assumed that Alex was short for Alexandra. My mom offered to come with me. Hell no. That I felt more wrong. comfortable if she'd drive me. When we got to the address, it was a townhouse in a congested area of town. The townhouse was on a dead end. My mom asked if I wanted her to come in with me, and honestly, I don't know why, but I thought it would be embarrassing to go in with my mom. Bitch, come outside. I'm not going inside. I asked her to just wait in the car unless I text her. <clears throat> I texted Alex, and then I went to ring the doorbell. I noticed all the blinds on the windows were closed, which was strange. It was the middle of the day. The door opened. And instead of some young girl around my age opening the door, it was an actual grown man, like 50 years old. Turn he back smiled around. and asked if I was here for the dress. Turn him back around. I said, yeah, are you Alex? And he said, yeah. He said I looked just like his daughter and then said, come inside. Nope. I looked back at my mom's car and then went inside the house. Oh my God. God. First of all, you're 17. You're not ignorant. You're not ignorant. At 15, I know. Probably at 12, I would know. I ain't going to nobody stranger's house like that. I don't give a fuck how friendly you seem at the... Bro, I came here to pick up whatever this is that you got. I don't need to go in your house. You could... If it, if it ain't no big-ass box, you could literally hand it to me right there, and I could give you the money right there. Fuck, I gotta go in for Bitch, I don't want no tea. He said I should be a perfect fit for the dress. He said he'd go get it. Well, then, just, yeah, then you gotta try it on. I didn't think of that. But still, I'll try that bitch on outside. I don't give a fuck. He said I should be a perfect fit for the dress. He said he'd go get it, then disappeared into another room. The living room was dark and kind of messy. I'm getting out. I took out my phone and texted my mom to come to the front door. Yes, Then please. the man called out from a room for me to come inside and no. try the dress on in front of a mirror. No. I asked him if he could bring the dress out to the living room. Yes. He said there's no mirror in the living room. I, don't I replied that i just like to see the dress first. Mm -hmm. He left the room and entered the living room <laughs> empty-handed and said the dress is on the bed in the bedroom if I want to go look at it. Bro, if you go in here, something is mentally wrong with you. I once again asked him to please just bring it out here. Then a knock at the front door. Alex said, who is that? Bitch, the door, why is the door closed? Oh. And I opened the door to my mom stepping inside. She smiled and said hello to the man, and he took a couple seconds to say hello back, but without a smile. Now I walked to the doorway of the bedroom, and as I did, he made a noise as if to say don't go in there. I looked into the dark bedroom, and there was no dress on the bed. My mom was in the middle of asking a question when I interrupted and said there's no dress. There was a painfully uncomfortable and tense silence, and then the man said I'd like you to leave now. My mom and I, without hesitation, left to the car. By the time we were in the car, the front door was already closed, and I saw the man peering through the kinked blinds. We were both in shock. If my mom hadn't come in, I don't know what would have happened. Oh my god. Some people just... Yeah, they got people with problems, but they got, they got people that just don't have common sense and just don't think about sketchy ass situations. I asked you, I got one time to ask you, hey, um, uh, well, you know, first of all, I wouldn't have even made it in the fucking house, I'm gonna be honest. Second of all, you dumb as fuck for going there by yourself. My mom, if, if anything, if I'm a girl, my mom, I would tell her it's a guy. First of all, when I open the door, I'll be like, this is a guy giving me this dress. He want me to come in. Come over here. Like, you know, I need you to talk to him and you need to come in with me at least. Secondly, yeah, she did the right thing of saying, can I, can you bring it in here? Because why the hell would, do, do you step, bruh, boy? I reported the Craigslist ad. We didn't call the police, though, because there was really yeah, no proof no, of anything. Yeah, no proof. Really. And technically, nothing happened. Yeah. But there was no blue dress in that room. He was just trying to get me into that room 
and when my mom came in, he couldn't exactly do that anymore. Thank God I listened to my mom and didn't give him our address. I ended up getting a used dress shipped to me. That prom night, I told everyone this story, and it's still kind of haunting even today. Some people really gotta have something that damn traumatic to really make them think smart. I didn't have to have really nothing for me to do that. Like, for, oh my God, you would never get me, man. You would never get me. I, I'm a dude and I wouldn't even really want to walk into another dude's house if he was giving me something. I'd be like, nah, we could do this outside in public in a possibly busy area. So no, I ain't get got, you know? And I, you could tell if they sketchy, if they be like, nah, we should meet at 11 o'clock at night because I work. Bitch, I don't give a fuck. You got off day. I know you do. You going you we gonna pick an off day and you gonna have, we gonna do the sale then in broad daylight in public. I'm not doing no. If, you, if they gotta keep being like, no, nah, you gotta come do this. You don't meet them on they needs. You meet them on y'all on like basically halfway on most situations. Halfway is always agreeable. That's what I say. Man, you almost got got in our high school class. There was a kid named Joshua that moved to our high school during freshman year, so I guess he had a hard time breaking into any of the established friend groups. Huh? He had a few friends here and there from what I know, but he wasn't part of any particular groups. But then something really awkward happened one day during lunch. I had already asked my date Natalie to prom and she said yes. At lunch we had a table of mixed guys and girls, and Natalie was at the table. Here came Joshua from whatever table he was sitting at, and like an awkward scene out of a movie, he tapped Natalie on the shoulder and asked her to prom. The whole table went silent except for one kid who cheered sarcastically. Then Natalie laughed in clear discomfort and said she's already going with me. I felt the secondhand embarrassment. Joshua looked at me, and I didn't know what to think of the stare he gave me, but I could tell he was humiliated. I mean, that sounds like a you problem. Bitch, you probably, you possibly shouldn't knew that shit already. I'm gonna be honest, Joshua. And I didn't know what to think of the stare he gave me, but I could tell he was humiliated. He left without saying a word, and everyone laughed loudly. <clears throat> it was a horribly uncomfortable scenario all around. While I felt bad, I couldn't help but slightly laugh too. I wouldn't feel bad. I mean, I have no idea what he thought was gonna happen. Exactly. Especially with such a large audience of dudes at the table too. Exactly. We watched as Joshua actually left the cafeteria, and the teacher on lunch duty actually chased after him because you weren't allowed to leave without a pass. Oh. But Joshua never came back into the lunchroom. <clears throat> I still wonder where he went from there. On prom night, we had our group of ten in the back of the limo. It looked like a PC, my nigga. Do you see this? Oh, fuck, that bitch look like a fan that go on a PC. The same ten of us sat at the table together when at the fun. dance. <clears throat> Everything was going as prom should. Mm -hmm. But then, eventually that night, one of my friends told me, don't look now, but Josh was at that table eyeballing you. I waited like 10 seconds before looking over, and I saw Joshua shooting a dagger at, I guess, Natalie and I. I decided I'd go talk to him. Uh, first of all, bitch, we got a problem? Because, I mean, obviously, it looked like you got a problem with me. That's exactly what I was saying. If not, I'm going to be honest. Uh, You know, I can handle shit myself, you know, even though I'm a grown man, but I'm going to know when shit seems sketchy. I'm going to be like, hey, um, hey, Miss Teacher, Miss Teacher. Uh, for some reason, he's standing at me like we got a problem. I don't know what the fuck his problem is, but I'm, gonna, I'm just letting you know. If, if if this escalate, I'm gonna have to put my hands on him. I'm just gonna straight tell you straight like that, because I don't appreciate how you looking at me and my, my prom date right here. I'm gonna tell you like that. But as I walked over to him, he got up and hurried away out of the dance hall. Nah, bitch, don't get scared. You staring at me. Don't, don't run. That was super weird, but I wasn't gonna chase after him. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I went over to the table he was sitting at and asked a couple of the kids if they came with Joshua. And they said no, he kind of just sat there randomly and wasn't saying anything. Nope, 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 nope. You could tell he on bad intentions. Nope, I am not dealing with this shit. I went back to my table, and like a typical high schooler, I told the whole table. Hell yeah. It was definitely pretty freakish. I'm letting that bitch be known around After everywhere. prom, Natalie and I left with a friend who drove to go to a diner to eat a bunch of breakfast food at like 12 a.m., after that, we went to our friend Anthony's house. Ah, damn. He had a massive backyard right next to a nature preserve, and he had a really cool fire pit. So we all circled the fire pit with a speaker playing music and some drinks. <clears throat> okay. There were six of us total. Bitch, we ain't got no fence. I didn't hear nothing like, I just heard he got like a cool thing in his backyard. I, if this is the, what kind of what it's based off of, I've seen no fence. What is we doing? Anthony sitting across from me pointed out to the woods 
and said he saw something in the woods. We all looked over, of course. We looked at the woods for a while, but when we didn't see anything, Anthony basically said I ate whatever. We continued to hang by the fire pit for a while. Eventually, one couple left, so it was just Natalie, Anthony, his date, and myself left. Okay, we got four people. Anthony was mid-sentence when he stopped speaking abruptly. I said, what? And I turned around and saw someone walking towards the light of the fire from the woods. It was someone in a tuxedo. He said to us, don't get up. As he got closer, we realized it was Joshua. He was holding a hatchet or a small axe. Bro, chill the fuck out. Bro, bro, bro. People that grow up like this, that I'm saying that, oh, this Joshua is thrown the fuck off, obviously. Boy, you know how... He looked like he had been crying, but he also looked angry. Anthony and I told him to please put the axe down and just talk. Joshua yelled at us to shut up, and he made us turn the music off. He began a rant about how soul-crushingly embarrassing what happened during lunch that day was. Not my problem, buddy. I'm sorry. Not my problem. It's your fault for being ignorant and didn't know that we was like... How he had been... Like, I mean, come on. Co co come on. Hold on. Let me pause it again. Come on now. Y you see females at a table with mostly guys. You you not putting some shit together that maybe, you know, some of these females are fucking with one of these guys. Like, come on now. What are we doing? Like, what? Man. About how soul-crushingly embarrassing what happened during lunch that day was. Not my problem. And how he had been too embarrassed to come back to school after that because he thought it had been spread all over the school, but it really hadn't. And we tried to tell him <clears> that. <throat> Anytime we tried to speak, he'd scream shut the fuck up louder and louder, and he'd begin to raise the axe, kind of. He then directed his attention to Natalie and started going on about how he thought she was gorgeous and that she would only make fun of him with her friends, which again, that never happened. All these things only happened in his head. During this time that he was talking to Natalie, Anthony was low-key and texted his dad something like, bring the gun to the backyard. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. As a dad, you come outside and you let that shit be known. You better get your little ass off this property. And I'm telling your parents if I find out who the fuck they is. And I'm reporting this shit to the school. Because if you run at me, I don't give a fuck if you a kid. I'm putting slugs in your ass. Boy, they got a hatchet. I ain't taking no... He trying to be Jason Voorhees He's so bad. He trying to. Making it clear we were in danger. Anthony's dad came out to the back door and yelled what's going on with his gun in his hand. Joshua stopped talking. And I could see he was deciding in his head whether to run or not. He dropped the axe and ran back to the woods. Anthony's dad came running over with his gun, and we all four of us couldn't tell him what happened quick enough. His dad said not to touch the axe, leave the fingerprints on it for the police. Exactly. That hatchet, axe, whatever, was eventually the key to prosecuting Joshua after a few days. Joshua had already been arrested, and so his fingerprints were in the system, and they matched the fingerprints on the axe. But when all four of us decided we didn't want to press charges on Joshua, it was too late. By that point, he got charged criminally. Anthony's friend said it was for menacing in the second degree. Mm -hmm. He didn't serve any jail time. Of course. I found Joshua on Facebook shortly after this and reached out to him with a sincere message, not attacking him at all. And he read it. He never replied to it. Bitch, why the f Oh my god, bro. If you ever do anything to try to threaten my life, I'm remembering that shit and we is not cool no more. Straight up like that. I ain't ever hitting you back up being like, hey, uh, you know, how how's it been? You know? You remember that night when you brought the axe over there? And I was like, hey, we're cool, right? No, never in my life. I'm gonna remember that shit. And if he was to ever message me, I'll tell him straight up. I said, say, man, you better, you must not cherish your wife because I am not cool with you if you come around me. I am putting slugs in you. Period. Period. I'm not taking no chance. No, fuck you. I ain't trying to be cool with you again. Hell no. I never was cool with you. First of all, you wouldn't cool with me. I wouldn't cool with you. Fuck you. I don't know you. I saw Joshua one other time in the halls that year. He didn't look at me. None of us ever saw him again after graduation. That's a good sign, man. That's a good sign. I don't see him again. I ain't gonna lie. Th th situations like this is when you move, bro. I'm situations like this, especially if I'm in like a small kind of town, and especially if he know, if I'm the person at the house, you know, at that house where he brought the axe to, I'm not sleeping comfortable at all no more. Straight up, like straight up, because he knows where I, one of us lives at least. That's the main thing he remembers, I would say. Never in my life, man. 